fulfilled my dream of going to the lighthouse. Um, just to let you know that uh, running from bed to the lighthouse is about 16 miles. So I made it. I can't believe I did this. I am so tired. I want to cry. So here's the George Washington Bridge. And I'm about to turn the So you can see the little red house. There it goes. Welcome to The Life, an e-news media presentation. I'm Andy Cohen. And I'm Paul Romano. We hope you enjoy this glimpse into the life of Brooklyn Friends School. Welcome back to the 151st year of Brooklyn Friends School and the third season of The Life. Today's episode will feature student reflections from the BFS Puerto Rico Immersion Experience Upper School Service Learning Trip. This is Paul Romano reporting for The Life. I sat down with some of our student activists who spent a week on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico this summer as part of a service learning immersion experience. Let's listen to some of their insightful reflections. Seeing it firsthand, like flying in, seeing the blue tarts and like ripped down vegetation really made me like, like it was a shock to see that like in front of you puts it into a perspective of really like having to appreciate where you live and how you live and um, realize that a lot of people are not living the same way or getting the help they need. I think it's a different thing going in physically versus having no general knowledge Um, and A, it surprised me how hot it was. I was not ready for that. Um, But B, it surprised me the difference of what the news said it was like over there versus what it was like. The group met up with this incredible group of young leaders our age and older who were working with the company Para la Naturaleza and then they met up with us and it just was so surprising how kind and resilient and inspiring and persevering they were like students, like college students from Puerto Rico. And they had like a big group and they would like teach us about like a lot of the animals. And then when we would go like kayaking, they would like point out a lot of things to us. And I feel like that was really cool. And that once we actually like grew a relationship with these students, they like told us their stories about like where they were at the time of the hurricane and like kind of how they felt. And they were amazing. Like the knowledge that they had about the environment and about frankly everything that was going on in PR was was pretty incredible. I wasn't expecting that much generosity from everybody. Being able to learn more about like the environment in Puerto Rico before and after the hurricane, how it affected the people there and what they did to help their communities. I feel like a lot of people think it's going to be like devastating and like a lot of it is like the stories but also like the island hasn't lost it's like magic so on the first night that we were there we took this walk out to like it was kind of like a cliff they had us like sit in silence without our phones without talking and to just pay attention to nature and we watched the sunset there until it like became dark and then we looked at the stars it was really beautiful like the moment of silence just like looking up at the stars and like hearing the waves crashing and like the cool breeze it wasn't hot it wasn't cold it wasn't uncomfortable it was just like perfect there was such like a like an energy present between all of us because we were tired and we had been like traveling all day and learning and stuff it felt like so magical that first night sitting on that 
like hill. It was just so nice to be all together with the group. I think the people's dedication to reestablishing and healing their communities that have been impacted by um, the hurricane was really striking, and I think it sets Puerto Rico apart because they are so connected that it comes out through the progress that they make and um, the solidarity that they have. When we went and we helped uh, at the little farm, I helped paint a gate. It was really nice. I bonded with like the people I was there with and others. They like planted um, like yucca plants um, and like pineapples and stuff. We also plowed the land with um, the bulls, or the not the bulls, um, the ways. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was really cool. They they like pull the the plow. And they, they do it all, like, manually, not with any machines or anything. And it was really nice just, like, seeing how grateful they were that we had been there to help out, how much we had helped out. Um, we had harvested uh, juca, which is, like, a like a plant um, which produces, like, it's like a vegetable. Um, we had harvested enough to, like, feed, like, 200 people. And just seeing the amount of work and effort it took to, like, actually farm what we did farm, these people who had their own farm, like, They were the suppliers for their neighborhood. They work 24-7 to make sure that they could pick all that food. And like after like a few hours we were there, like the heat was really getting to me. And then I was like in pain. Like I would I would I would still try and work, but like it was it was hard. And the fact that they have to deal with that on a daily basis, especially in the summer, is insane. Visiting the small community of Barcelona in um, next to El Junque, they really were invested in community engagement and civic engagement in order to keep their community alive. They t- welcomed us with such affection and welcomed us back in order to continue the work. I think that was really important um, to understanding what Puerto Rican people really value. Like these small communities that you wouldn't necessarily think of who seem really minor, but are also very impactful in the growth and development of Puerto Rico as a whole. And they are as as um, important to Puerto Rico as San Juan or any other bigger city. So we went snorkeling one day in this really pristine, wonderful beach. And I saw some ocean creatures that I had never thought I'd see before. And I got to hold a whole lot of creatures, which was not something I was expecting either. Sea urchins, we saw some sea, like uh, like a lot of animals and stuff. But the one animal that I was like, I don't want to touch that, was a sea cucumber. One of the leaders named Camila, she kept showing me like the sea cucumber and telling me to touch it. And it was like, oh, that doesn't look nice, whatever. And like its feet were like sucked into your hands and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was just weird. But anyway, by the end, I was like, I pranked Charles and I scared him with a, a sea cucumber. We did a hike through the rainforest and then there was a little surprise at the end. There was like this natural pool with a rope swing and we just kind of let loose of it and have we had a lot of fun. And I think we really bonded with the um, other kids who knew so much again about the earth and protecting it and everything and and it was really fun to have kids our own age especially to like be there and just you know connect with people and and it was really fun in the in the pool one of the main things that we talked about coming back was kind of the connection that we had made with each other so not only was it going down there and you know trying to help out the best that we can but like I mean, I personally already had a connection because I'm from there, but I think that it really allowed for other people to have a greater understanding of, like, this culture that is really beautiful. And I kind of wish that it's a trip that gets continued because there was something about it that just felt really wholesome. Thank you to our students for their inspired service and thoughtful reflections. And a special thanks to their faculty advisors, Razi, Veronica, and Noel who accompanied them on this memorable journey. As always, let your life speak.